Hello and welcome to the Caralam Cymru revision. This is for the Media Studies AS and this is going to focus on the music, video and advertising section of the Unit 1 exam. Hello, my name is Miss Hales and today I'm going to be presenting the revision session. If you have any questions during the session, if you jot them down and you join us for the live in a couple of weeks time, you'll be able to ask them and get some answers. This is approximately 45 minutes long, but it's going to be recorded and I'm going to encourage you to pause it and answer some questions as you go through. I'm going to take you through the different sections in Unit 1 and today we're focusing on the music video and advertising. So I'm hoping that by the end of today's session, you will be confident about the approaches to music, video and advertising. You'll understand how to find the answers for them and you'll be able to structure a response for them. I'm also hoping that you'd be familiar with the mark scheme and the success criteria. So the first thing we need to think about is what does the paper actually look like? So this is the AS paper and it is the unit one. This is called Investigating the Media, and we're going to look at just the Section A part of that today. Obviously, over the next couple of weeks, we'll look at all of the sections. In the exam, make sure you're prepared, bring yourself black, plenty of black pens, and you might want some highlighters if you're the sort of person that likes to annotate and make notes as you go through. When you're doing question one, you need to make sure that you've got something to refer back to. So you need to be making notes as you're watching the video and then you're going to have something to help you frame your response. So in the exam, you've got two and a half hours to deal with three sections and each one is on a topic that you've already prepared. So music, video and advertising, which is today's focus, news next week and film in Wales and Hollywood, which will be the week after. The music video and advertising is the longest one because you've got to watch the, the um, video or deconstruct the advert. So you've got an hour and 10 minutes to do that one, even though it's only one question. Both the news and the film section are 40 minutes each. When you get into the exam, you need to use the marks as a guide to how much needs to be written. So you know how much you write in an hour and 10 minutes. You know what sort of length you required. And for a 40 mark question, you're going to have a good idea of what you need to do. You need to make sure you read the question really carefully for section A, because that's going to focus all your notes and your response. You've got one question, one chance. So you need to make sure you're really, really focused on it. In the exam, the examiner expects you to use subject specific terminology, which is relevant and appropriate. It's not about just um, technique spotting and just dumping in the terminology. You've got to relate it to what you're saying. You've got to make it fit into the question as you're going through. You also need to use theories, again, which are relevant, which are linked to the points that you are making, not just dumping them in because you remember them and that's what you know. You've got to make sure that they fit the response that you're um, being asked to, to create. So before we start, here are two revision organisers from the WJC, which are specifically on the topics that we're covering today. So these are really good for revision. They're handy um, reminders of what the WJC expects you to know when you get into the exam. So hopefully you can click on the link and you'll be able to go straight to those. So we're looking at section A today, which is the advertising and the music video. In this exam, in this section, the WJC is testing your knowledge and understanding. Specifically, they're testing your knowledge and understanding of media language, representations and audiences. But they're asking you to do that in relation to advertising or music video. So they're going to tailor your response. They're going to direct you to look at something and then obviously shape your answer from that. You're going to have one question. This is the conceptual framework that you'll be familiar with, and this is what you'll have been studying as you've gone through your course. You'll have looked at media language, audience and representations. So as you're going through the music video and the advertising section, you're thinking about the media language and you're thinking about how that language, those codes and conventions and the techniques that are being used help to create the meaning that you are deconstructing. You also need to be thinking about how those audiences watching that are responding to it and how they're interacting with it. What is their response to the media product that you're analysing? 
Within that, you also need to be thinking about how the media is presenting the events or the issues or the places or even the sociocultural groups that are within the video or the print based advert that you're studying. You need to break it down and you need to be considering how those representations are being given to the audience and you need to do that along with the key critical perspectives. So, for example, the media language is expecting you to look at the technical visual and audio codes. So they're expecting you to look at the camera. They're look, expecting you to deconstruct the diegetic and non-diegetic sound. They're expecting you to look at the way in which it's being laid out or designed. They're expecting you to look at the language, the way in which they're talking to the audience. Lots of things to consider, but things that you should be familiar with and quite confident in doing really. When you're looking at the moving image, they're expecting you to look at camera. They're expecting you to look at the way the camera pans or um, changes angle or the way in which it moves into the shot or gives a wide angle to look at more of the scenery. They're expecting you to deconstruct that camera along with the mise en scène, the editing, the sound. So there's lots of things again to consider there. When you're looking at the print based, they expect you to look at the layout, the design conventions. They expect you to look at where the pictures are laid out, where the colours are being selected carefully, maybe the typography, the font style. <clears throat> When you're looking at online material, they expect you to think about the position of the images or the photographs. They expect you to be able to understand how those navigation features would work on a web page and be able to deconstruct how that appeals to the audience. They also expect you to look at the media language and the combination and how that all creates a meaning. For the representations, they're really expecting you to look at those social and cultural groups, thinking about perhaps gender or ethnicity, age, and looking at how that's represented in the images that you're looking at. They want you to think about the issues, perhaps the context within which it's being presented, perhaps the historical sort of um, events that are going on or that are being referenced in the text. They expect you to think about how those things are combined to create a reconstruction and representation of gender, ethnicity and age. They want you to think about the social groups which may be underrepresented or perhaps misrepresented in the images that are being presented to you. They want you to think about stereotypes and whether those are being used positively or negatively. They want you to think about the values that are being um, presented, maybe think about the effect and the purpose of the representations and maybe think about the audience position. So again, a lot to consider, but you don't have to cover everything when you're looking at these. This is about looking for what is relevant in the um, image, in the presentation that you're being given and the stuff that you're deconstructing. You're looking for the relevant parts that you're going to comment on. When you're looking at audiences, you're thinking at perhaps how they're grouped or how they're categorised by their socioeconomic um, class. You might be looking at how those media producers target audiences specifically, perhaps how they look at the appeal of the adverts. You might be thinking about how the audiences are going to be reached on a national or a global scale. You might be thinking about how they interpret the media and you might be thinking about how they're positioned, whether they're negotiating, whether they're opposing the messages that are being presented to them. So lots to consider and this is where you can bring your theory in and where you can use the relevant terminology that links it together. The WJC also expects you to know some basic critical perspectives as you're going through. So they're asking you to consider semiotics, the signs and symbols that are being presented to you, which is obviously BART's. They're expecting you to be able to refer to hall and gauntlet in order to be able to talk about representations. And they're also expecting you to be able to talk about Gerbner, Hall and Bandura possibly for the audiences. These are the basics. These are the ones they expect you to have at your fingertips. They don't mind if you use others, but it's again, it's about what is relevant at the time that you are deconstructing the images that you have in the exam. So the WJC spec asks you to focus on the construction of representations and how that's built up. They expect you to spend some time on a detailed study as you go through and then they test that study in the exam. They're testing how well you've learnt your um, representations, how you can talk about audiences and they really want you to think about how that's used to sell values and lifestyles. They want you to think about the diverse range that's being offered and about 
perhaps some more controversial issues as well. So they definitely don't expect you to just toe the line. They want you to be just debating, discussing and giving your own opinions on these things. They will ask you to look at perhaps some charity adverts as you go through. And certainly last year's exam was a Red Cross advert. So they give you that sense of being able to look at different styles of advertising as well. And they want you to be looking at that in a wide range of ways so that you can discuss how audiences are categorised and constructed. So they expect you to use theory and they want you to be able to use that as relevant to the points that you are making. So here's a quick test for you. If you wanted to read these and try and work out who said them, um, obviously I'm going to give you the answers as we go through now, but you could pause here and you could think about it. So we've got repeated exposure to messages in the media, which shapes people's perceptions. So you need to be thinking which theorist said that. And obviously that's Gerbner who's talking about how being exposed to repeated messages helps you to um, understand the world around it and your place within it. You've got Gauntlet looking at messages about gender identity and how those become complex and develop over time. And then you've got the encoding and decoding, so the messages which are encoded by the producer, which are then decoded by the audience, which is Hall. OK, so you're being expected to be able to refer to those and apply those to your understanding of the text that you are deconstructing in the exam. So looking at it, you may be thinking about what sorts of issues, what sorts of questions are going to be raised when you're looking at this. So I've got some examples here which are from the WJC. So you've got Gerbner. Gauntlet and Hall. So we'd be thinking, right, if we're deconstructing this with Gauntlet in mind, uh, sorry, Gerbner in mind, we'd be thinking perhaps about the dominant ideologies. We'd be thinking about maybe the messages that are being presented and whether we are accepting or negotiating our way through those. With Gauntlet, we might be thinking about the images of femininity being presented and how a female audience or a male audience might take something from the image and create their own meaning of it. With Hall, we're perhaps thinking about the uh, denotations and the connotations of power and control, maybe thinking about how the image is being presented, maybe deconstructing the way in which you decode those messages. So you've got to look at both print based and um, music video, so advertising which is print and advertising which is audiovisual. So here is an example of an print based advert and um, what I would encourage you to do here is pause now and consider how this um, advert presents images of gender. So thinking about the way in which this presents an image of um, femininity. OK, and what I've done is I've given you some questions around the side of it. And then um, once you've considered that, if you start playing again, you're going to get some more questions and then some pointers. So pause here, have a go, see if you can answer. And then I'm going to give you some ways in which I would approach this. So I'd be looking at who is represented in the advert. I'd be looking at the age, the gender, the ethnicity, the disabilities that are present. I'd be thinking about why Sainsbury's has put these people in the advert and what message it's trying to give. What, com what is the company's sort of um, ideology here? What are they trying to present to you? I'd be thinking about the writing. I'd be thinking about the messages that are encoded within that and how they're trying to present an image of themselves, but also of their clothing. And I'd be thinking about the um, products that are being advertised and how they're being um, sold to an audience. So in order to do that, <coughs> I've been considering the mise-en-scene. So what does it suggest? What is happening in that room where these women are? What's that giving an idea of? I'd be thinking perhaps about where the camera is, what the camera's focusing on, where the women are looking perhaps, which is another point that I might consider. How do they look as well? How are they presented? Are they suggesting that they're comfortable and happy with what's going on? Are these confident women who are presenting an image of themselves as capable and independent? And I'd also be thinking about the endorsement. It says up here, as seen on this morning. And what does that suggest for Sainsbury's? Why has Sainsbury's decided to use that intertextual link to show that another company has endorsed them or another brand has endorsed them? So thinking about that as well is quite useful. 
So I'm going to move on now and I'm going to show you the sorts of things that I would be considering. So in terms of gender, I think it's all women, which is interesting because most companies aim at men when they're talking about office wear and you're often talking about suits. This is definitely going against that image. The age range is really diverse. There's a wide range of um, ages, which suggests that two is a company for everyone. That Sainsbury's clothes, the, the brand um, Sainsbury's, which sell the clothing too, are um, suiting you at whatever point you are in your life. When we talk about race, there is a range, a diverse range of ethnic backgrounds, which again suggests that two is working hard to create a range of clothing for everyone. What I like about this advert is the inclusion of a wheelchair user as standard. There's no special considerations here. This wheelchair user is in the middle of all these women, just as a comfortable part of that um, scene. So you just get the sense that it's a very inclusive approach to the clothing, suggesting that two is working hard. The writing, there's an imperative in the writing. It says be you. It's ordering the women to be themselves, suggesting that two is for women who want to be individuals. And then obviously it talks about work way and it talks about we, suggesting that everyone is part of this, that everybody's included and that it's for professionals. So that's where I'm working when I'm looking at a print based advert. Those are the sorts of things that I'm considering and I'm definitely deconstructing all those things that I can think of. I'm looking at the audience. I'm looking at the representations. I'm looking at the media language. I'm looking at the camera, the colours, the um, the way in which the mise-en-scene is being used to create a representation of something. And I'm looking at the messages that are being encoded and I'm deconstructing that so that I've got something to say about the way in which scenes is selling its product to a wide audience. So the next thing I need to do is I need to think about the theory that goes with that. So with Gauntlet, I could be talking perhaps about the positive representations of gender. So these women are being presented as independent. They're not reliant on men. They're happy. They're confident. They're enjoying the way that they're um, presenting themselves. I also might consider Mulvey here, Laura Mulvey, who talks about the male gaze. So thinking about the fact that it's an all women um, advert, think, thinking about the way in which they're being presented. Obviously, Sainsbury's wants their audience to buy their product. They're selling their product to you. So they're trying to sell aspirations. They're trying to show you that women can be positive and independent and work. So these women are shown um, as pretty. They're they're being presented in a way which is flawless. They're conventionally pretty. However, they're also happy and they're confident and there is a sense of camaraderie there that's being presented. So they're strong, they're independent in their lifestyle choices. And so Sainsbury's are trying to present that as um, something which you can aspire to. So that's an interesting way to look at it as well. So that's the print based. So now we need to think about the moving image. So we need to think about um, the video, the music video. This is a sheet from the WJ which gives you a directed analysis which helps you to decide how you would um, deconstruct a music video. And if you look at it, it gives you a range of points to consider and then asks you questions within it. So if you were to print this and have it next to the music videos that you're deconstructing, it will give you a, a way in. It will give you some pointers as to what you should be looking at. So you've got the semiotics. Um, talking about maybe body language, maybe where the positioning of the subject is, maybe the framing of the image. You've also got uh, suggestions to look at the lighting, the colour, the camera. You then would perhaps consider the genre codes, so the actual codes and conventions of a music video, and think about the repetition of those elements within that, the way in which that genre is created. So perhaps look at the iconography or the costume or the performance codes, lots of different things that you consider. You could then also think about the representations that are being presented in this music video, the dress codes, the costume, the artist. Are they being presented as um, ordinary, a character, or are they being presented as a star? Um, and then perhaps consider, does the image challenge or reinforce the gender representations? And then think about how is the audience being positioned by all of this? So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a short clip of a Madonna video, a very short clip, which I'm going to show you off YouTube. So you can go on to YouTube and you can get this for yourselves. This is um, Madonna like a prayer. And what you'll see with um, this is a range of different presentations. And I'm asking you to consider the presentation of gender within this. 
Okay, so we've got Madonna Like a Prayer. I'm going to play very short clips of this for you. Okay, so I'm going to stop there just for the first um, thoughts. Consider what's being presented straight away. I would be looking at the fact that it's set at night. I would be thinking of the connotations of that night. I would be considering perhaps the flames in the background. I would be perhaps considering the non-diegetic sirens which are being uh, used as a way of creating a sense of tension and danger. We can't see any emergency vehicles, but we can hear the sirens in the background. Then I perhaps start considering where the camera is positioned. The camera is low, the camera is at almost ground level and the artist, Madonna, is running towards that camera. What sort of um, sense does that create? Is there a sense of danger and tension being presented? When she trips and falls towards the camera, why is that position chosen? What is the director and the producer trying to say about the meanings and the messages that they're trying to present when they show you that? Are they just enhancing the danger? Are they perhaps showing you Madonna as a um, victim? Perhaps they're showing you Madonna as a person who is concerned about themselves and about the world in which they are being presented at the moment. So lots of things to consider here. And obviously you've got this flame in the background. There's a motif of flames in this video, very important motif of flames, which we're gonna see if we can look at now. Okay, so a couple of things happening there. You've got the motif of flames being shown again, but obviously if you look at that carefully, it's a flame of a cross, a burning cross, uh, reminiscent of the Ku Klux Klan, which is, um, very significant in, in history. So perhaps you'd be talking about the images of danger there. Obviously, if you know your history, they would burn these crosses on the um, fronts of houses to intimidate and scare uh, black members of the community because they wanted to try and intimidate them. Very racist um, ideas going on here. So this is a very controversial part of this video. Why are these burning crosses being used as part of a music video for Madonna? Worth looking at that, considering that. We've also got this door slamming shut. What does that suggest? Is that creating a sense of a closure? Is that suggesting a, a finality? Is that suggesting that something's ended? Or is it suggesting that something's trapped? It looked like a jail door, a door closing, which means you're not going to be able to escape. What is that saying in the narrative of this uh, video? So all of these things are things that I'm going to be considering and looking at when I'm considering how these images are being presented to me and how gender is being represented here. A couple more seconds of this video. OK, and what I'm going to say to you now is I would be considering the representation of Madonna, both as an artist and as a character within this story. Um, is she the star, the singer, the dancer here, or is she a character playing a narrative role? Do you perhaps want to get Prop and Todorov out and look at the way that the, the narrative structure of the music video is working? That might be something that you might want to consider. Um, I would say to you that Madonna is being presented here as somebody who is concerned, who is worried, who is frightened of what is going on around her. Now I'm going to stop the video there. I think that's enough of that one. And I'm going to go back to the main um, slides now. So that would be the first thing that I would be considering when I'm looking at Madonna there. And I would be considering the way in which all of those things are being brought together to create a sense of the gender. Now, I would also um, encourage you to look at another music video and I would encourage you to look at the music video of Beyonce, um, Girls Rule the World. So I'm going to try and show you that as well now. Um, so again, I'm not going to show it all to you. I'm just going to show you a short clip of it and I would like you perhaps to think about as you're watching how is the um, character being presented, how is the artist and the dancer being presented. So. OK, so this is the second video that I would like you to, to consider, which is the Beyonce video for Girls Rule the World. I've started at this time slightly in, so I started at about 40 seconds in, and I want you to consider the way in which uh, gender is represented again. So when you're looking at Beyonce, 
similar to Madonna, considering perhaps how she's being presented as a character or as an artist, perhaps thinking about the way in which she's presented as a dancer and the skill and the performance elements of the uh, video. But looking here, I would be considering the framing. I'd be considering the camera angle and I'd be considering the costume the use of the jewellery here and the colours of gold that are being presented, what they might signify, represent. So definitely when you're thinking about um, the image here, you've got this sense of gold and power and, and wealth. So if I play this now, the image changes, shows her with the girls behind her, shows the power as she walks towards a group. So. I would be talking about the confrontation here. I would be talking about the elements of danger that are being presented. She's standing there. She's challenging the men that are coming. Behind her are women. So perhaps considering the way in which she's presented here. Looking at the stance, looking at the body positioning, the open challenge that she's got with her hands on her shoulders, but also then looking at the very choreographed nature of the dancing and the fact that the dancing matches the music. So this is a very stylized dance um, which has been choreographed and obviously demonstrates her skills as an artist and as a dancer. Um, perhaps looking at the binary oppositions of male versus female um, and the way in which those are presented. Perhaps looking at the use of colour, the black and the red being given here. Um, perhaps look at the lighting, the fact that it picks up on the hair, the gold again of her creating a halo effect around her head. So all of those things are things that perhaps you want to be considering as you're looking at the gender. A couple more seconds. So two men stood there in front of her as bodyguards, images of power and control here, um, echoes of war, echoes of soldiers. Um, you've got salutes here as well. So there's a lot going on. And obviously the challenge in some of the faces of some of the girls who are confronting and challenging. But equally, the costume and the way in which they're presented here it, it's worth considering, you know, is this because they've chosen these costumes or is this the way that they've been presented in terms of an image of femininity? Are these low cut revealing costumes how people expect to see women dressed on a music video following the conventions of it? Or is it something they've chosen to make a statement? Again, it's, it's worth considering those and thinking about the way in which that's presented. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing that now. So those are two music videos and that's the way that I would be looking at those. Um, I would also then be thinking about the messages that are being presented and thinking about them. So I've got for you an example of a question. So what I've got for you here is how representations of gender have been constructed in the two music videos. So there's your sort of question. So what I would say to you now is pause this, think about the two videos that you've just seen, and perhaps watch them all the way through to consider how those representations of gender are being presented, and perhaps start thinking about how media language um, and representations are being used to embody values and messages. Make some notes, consider them. And then when you come back, what you will find is that I've got some suggestions of things that you could look at and a suggestion of some uh, mark criteria for you. So this is a question from the 2017 specimen paper that has been adapted slightly to show you how to approach it. So. When I was doing this in the exam, I would definitely be looking at planning and jotting down my ideas. So as I'm watching the video, I'm jotting down my notes, I'm trying to organise my ideas, I'm trying to think about what I want to say. And I'm presenting it in such a way that I am able to um, write a response from it. So I'm organising them as I'm going, adding in my theoretical approaches, adding in the terminology that I know I need, and I'm trying to organise my ideas. So I've got an intro, my general thoughts, my key messages, which are going to go into the middle of my essay, and then my summary, my main response that I'm going to be given at the end in my conclusion. The examiner is looking for you to use um, a variety of approaches, and they're wanting you to look at a range of aspects, not just one thing. 
So the best answers in 2022 were those that explored a range of different aspects um, and looked at things which were relevant and appropriate to move an image. So they considered the camera angles, they considered the movement, the edit and the pace, but they also considered the sound codes, um, the costume, the mise-en-scene. So there's lots to come together. So it's not just about focusing on one detail, it's about trying to show a range of things and how those things come together. At the higher end, the examiner is going to expect you to explore the representations of gender um, with visual and audio codes in quite a lot of detail. In the middle band, those CD is slightly more straightforward, um, given some obvious aspects. Um, but thinking still about a range of ideas. If you look at this, they're talking about a range of things. They're suggesting that you might want to talk about setting, location, props, costume performance, and then technical codes, camera work and lighting. And although it does say that critical perspectives are not required, it says that they might feature in the higher band. So trying to bring in a range of ideas about the critical perspectives, is going to help you approach those higher levels. There's no guarantee, it's got to be relevant, you've got to be able to apply these ideas, but obviously critical, critical perspectives will help you to really consider it in a more detailed and sophisticated manner. So you will know already that you've got two assessment criteria when you're being uh, examined in the AS Unit 1. AO1 is looking at your knowledge and your understanding, and it's asking you to apply them to the conceptual framework. So how the image is selected, what, um, how is the media language constructed, the representations, how might those represent representations embody messages and values. So that's AO1. AO2 is then asking you to consider how that's done. So looking at what is being presented. So what I've done here is I've tried to show you how this might be used with in relation to Madonna and Beyonce. So I've tried to um, tailor the success criteria so that it matches the Madonna and the Beyonce videos that we just considered. So perhaps looking at the diverse representations of gender through the image of Madonna as a woman finding her inner strength or in Beyonce's video where you've got the binary opposition of male and female. Perhaps looking at the ideals of femininity, such as the dress that Madonna is wearing or the jewellery that Beyonce is wearing. Perhaps looking at the positive or the controversial representations of women. I mean, in Madonna's video, you've got a female god. In Beyonce's video, she's talking about how women can rule the world, but she's also doing that in a very low cut costume in shorts. So, you know, perhaps considering the representations, the body images that are being presented here. AO2 audio codes, looking at how they perhaps can consider the uh, create the gender representations, looking at the words that are being used in the songs. Um, Beyonce talking about girls rule the world, uh, Madonna talking about you know, repeated images of prayer and religion. And then the messages, the ideas of heaven and universality, universality being presented with Madonna up in the sky or perhaps the um, images of Beyonce with women having it all in her video. So if you've had a go at your answer now perhaps consider have you addressed some of these issues? Have a look at the mark scheme to see if you've approached it in an appropriate manner and maybe see if you've reached the band five um, points. Um, and this would be a good way of sort of testing your knowledge now and checking where you are. So thank you very much for attending this evening. I hope that you are confident now in approaching section A. Next week we'll have a look at section B. So I'm hoping that you are now familiar with the um, unit one questions and that you are able to address the music and video response, that you know how to structure your answer and that you're familiar with the mark scheme and the success criteria.